Minor injuries and accidents, they happen all the time on the job site. I can tell you, we don't really like that, right? But when things get serious, someone needs to be accountable. And a unique type of investigation must take place to determine what really happened and who is responsible. So to discuss all these details, I want you to welcome Greg Pestine, who is the civil engineer and construction expert at Robson Forensics. Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Greg, let's talk about this. When we look at job sites and things that happen, and there are accidents, what do you have to really do to start an investigation like that? Well, in my work, I usually come on board several years later, but what really needs to happen is documentation. People need to uh, photograph the scene and get witness statements and take measurements and so forth right at that time, because three years later, a lot of our memory is lost. So do we find a lot of reoccurring kind of things that happen at, a, at an accident? Because you say a lot of memory things are lost. So are there reoccurring accidents and, and incidences that occur on the site? Yes. there's uh, People forget the conditions of the job at the time, the lighting level, the housekeeping level, uh, the dimensions of whatever may have caused the injury. So when you look at that, you're kind of kind of taking, I guess, uh, tracking the steps of an incident and kind of recording what people might not have remembered and trying to get them to kind of retrace their steps, so to, so to speak. Right. I will uh, use people's deposition testimony, say, from three years or four years later. Um, it's, a lot of times it conflicts uh, with several of the witnesses. So we need to make the best sense out of uh, the information that we get. That can't be easy. I mean, you're getting people to say, I think I recall this, I recall that. And it's not that people are trying to tell different stories. It's what they recollect at the time. Right. Their perception could be different. And in my situation, I need to accept all of their testimony as being the truth. So are you looking at, like, the plaintiff scenario in, in these cases? I mean, are you looking at saying it's a he said, she said kind of scenario? I could either be looking at the plaintiff's uh, side or I could be defending one of the defendants on the case. So you're sometimes the bad guy. You're not necessarily the good guy, the bad guy. You're kind of caught in the middle on a lot of these. I help the, the, uh, the, the jury or the judge make a decision on what, you know, I help the justice system by providing the truth. So what are you actually trying to find on these situations? Are you finding out that, you know, maybe the construction worker didn't do what he was supposed to do? It was, it's unfortunate. I mean, let, let's look at it. Honestly, something happened that we don't really want to happen at the job site. We want everyone to be safe all the time. That's what we're looking at. But sometimes there are mistakes people made. Some things happen that a construction company or something occurred that we didn't want to occur. So what do you actually typically find? Are there things that they just didn't do right? You know, the worker didn't do right, the construction company didn't do right, it's the, the equipment just didn't work right? I mean, is it a whole host of things? Yeah, it is. Uh, a lot of the uh, recurring themes are that people aren't reviewing the, uh, the correct information. So we have the OSHA standards, but there's also manufacturer standards. There's the uh, and, uh, operating instructions of backhoe or of a bobcat. There's instructions on power tools, the uh, material safety data sheets. So we really need to communicate what the manufacturers are saying about these products. So does a lot of it have to do with really good training? Are we talking about if we really train our workers, we get them out there and they really know how to use the equipment, know what safety is all about? I mean, these are things that OSHA is saying. The more training, the better the site is going to be ultimately. I agree with that. You can't have too much training, but I think the training has to go more, more thorough, be more thorough than just what the OSHA standards say. I think we need to get involved in the actual materials and equipment that's being used. Is there something you've seen in some of the investigations that you've looked at? You said, "I really wish I didn't uncover that." That it's just <laughs> kind of, kind of left a really kind of sad feeling in your gut. Yeah, usually I see photographs, coroner reports. I see bodies that have been. Uh, buried in a, in a collapsed trench, uh, people who have fallen off of 30 feet off of roofs or even higher. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really gruesome injuries and sometimes I wish I hadn't turned the page and looked at them. You're the CSI of construction right now, right? <laughs> I've actually never seen that show. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at this, you know, when, when companies call you or, you know, 
wh wh what's your first reaction? You're saying, look, I've got to get out there. I've got to do my job. And sometimes you, you don't feel comfortable doing that, right? I mean, you've just got it's, you have a job to do. Well, first I have to feel comfortable that I can help them. Um, and if I can't help their side, then I won't take the case. So I won't get involved at all then. How do you determine when you take a case? What's, what's the I underlying look, information? I look at some of the basic facts, uh, some, basically some photographs and um, the allegations of what went wrong. And um, then I'll do some basic research and look at the codes and standards and see if anything may have been violated uh, in a way that caused this injury. So ultimately, in the end, are you hoping to improve safety on the job site when you're done, that you've showing these construction companies this is the way you have to improve safety at the job site? I would hope that my, through my work, it would trickle down through the legal system back to the insurance companies and the contractors and, and hopefully provide for safer workplaces and safer workers. Well, Greg, thank you for joining us with, on Safety Zone. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, that's our Safety Zone for today.